Hi everybody and welcome to another fine episode of South Polar Bust. My mission to take these three brave Kerbal Knots and send them to the South Pole via the North Pole. Why are we going via the North Pole? Because you can't drive to the South Pole without uh, passing by the North Pole. So I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, leave a manned research station at each pole. Uh, and along the way, uh, I'm going to be taking the hands-off approach and using my KOS system as my autopilot. Uh, and uh, after the research stations are left at each pole, they'll be able to um, do research on the KOS system as well. Uh, so after the last video, somebody uh, in the comments asked for uh, the ability to see my position uh, so they can track my progress on the map. Well, from now on, you'll see my position right here at all times. And uh, I'll start with some YouTube comments. Um, Check86 had a question about uh, attitude, which as I understand it is just your facing. Um, he wanted to know how he could get uh, the, his craft's attitude. Um, you can actually type uh, facing, just print facing, and that should give you the rotation uh, that your craft currently is. Um, it's not fully tested. The last time I tried to test it, uh, I think my craft exploded. So um, use that one at your own risk. Um, but uh, certainly that is something that I think people would need. Um, he goes on to say, uh, it looks like Nevek might have found a way to do that. Based on the video, it looks like the rover is automatically avoiding steeper terrain and taking longer but but flatter route to the waypoint. Uh, I wish that were true, but you give me far too much credit. Um, my steering system is actually just attempting to steer towards the, the heading that I've given it. Um, and uh, if it seems like it's avoiding kills, it's just because this, uh, I'm not accounting for the extra torque you need to steer against a slope like that. Um, so it's actually just kind of falling away, I think. Um, I think I did see some parts in the, in the original video where it was just kind of veering off for no apparent reason. Um, so I don't know exactly why that is. That might be a bug. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Woozer says, uh, any good ideas on how to set speed limit depending on vehicle angle? So going downhill would cut power and even maybe add rear brakes or something similar. Uh, again, we, you know, we don't really have a, a good way to do that. Um, even though you can get your rotation, it might not be very easy to get your pitch. Uh, so, um, yeah, if so, then, then that's theoretically possible, except uh, right now you can't address individual parts. Um, if you can't, if you, if we could do that, then we could potentially uh, set the brakes or a reverse throttle on the rear wheels and that would work. But again, uh, you know, the system doesn't have that yet. Um, and there are some very specific problems that come with trying to address individual parts uh, in Kerbal Space Program. Um, just, um, you know, the. I just, um, there's problems when you're trying to address a part because uh, the system will kind of forget that part's ID the next time you reload. So if you were to write a program that's based on that, um, you kind of want to make sure that it still has the same ID number when you come back or else that program's useless, right? Let's say you were to save and then reload your save, right? You want to make sure that any program you wrote still works. Um, Sean T. Hammond writes, any interest in naming geographic features you run across? Um, sure. If, uh, if I run across something interesting and it, uh, and I can think of a name to give it, sure. Why not? Uh, if you can think of any names, by all means, leave it in the comments. Um, so, uh, one thing that happened this week is I started to look into, um, what I should do about parsing and expressions. Um, basically right now, the, the way that the system handles language isn't really that good. Um, you know, it has little problems like, um, like poor handling of white space. Um, and, uh, you know, it was pointing out to me that there are, there are tools out there that allow you to, to help you write your own parser. Like they'll, they'll basically write a, a language parser for you. 
Um, I looked into a couple of those and it seemed like the work that it would take to implement these kind of systems into KOS would, would take a few weeks. And I, I don't really want to uh, um, stop working. Like, I don't want to spend all of that time working on refining one thing and not be able to release any, you know, cool new features for, you know, for the, for the mod um, while I'm doing that, which is basically what would happen. I also wouldn't be able to, you know, address any bugs. Basically there would be no updates until I was completely done uh, implementing that. And uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'm, I'm working on some ideas to kind of streamline the process of right yet yeah, of, um, So what I'm really trying to say here is my way of coding the language needs to get better. And I'm working on several ideas on how to make that happen. So going forward, I don't think that I'll be implementing, you know, the third party solutions that were presented to me. Um, but I'm always open to, to making the language more consistent and just more error free in general. Uh, so usually the way I do my videos is, you know, this is actually the first time that I'm trying to do a live, um, you know, a, a live recorded one where I'm actually, um, recording my voice in real time. Uh, usually, uh, I go over and over those videos and, you know, I, I fix it up and I re-record and re-record and until I, you know, I feel it's perfect. So this is, this is going to be good for me because it's kind of taking me out of my comfort zone a little more. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about in this video is just kind of what are some of my priorities for, um, like what are my requirements for getting to the 1.0 release of this? Um, I kind of slowed down the version numbering a little bit because I can sense that I'm kind of getting close to 1.0 and I feel that there's, there's a certain level of expectation when you hit 1.0, there's a certain level of, of bug freeness and, and, um, you know, just quality and, and having enough features to, um, to call it a 1.0. Right. And, um, so, you know, some of the things that I, that I really want to have are one, like one thing is maneuver nodes. Like I want to make sure that people actually have a way to use KOS to, um, get to another planet. And, um, currently I don't have enough knowledge about the math to make that happen. Um, or even, I'm not even 100% sure how I would implement the ability to set maneuver nodes. So, um, that's, that's a potential stumbling block there. And, um, another, another thing I, I want to make sure we have, which is pretty much done is mod mod integration. So the ability for other mod makers to, um, add commands to KOS, that feature is actually already in there. Um, I just haven't completely released it because, um, there's just some, there's just some details I want to iron out first. Like I need to figure out if your mod is able to get information back from KOS, it probably should, but just how, how that will be handled, um, is something I need to decide. Um, one other thing I need to do for 1.0 is, um, is, t you know, I want to take the one thing that I did with the antennas in the comm dish was, um, I took elements that right now are completely aesthetic and try to assign meaning to them. Um, and I had, and I had very specific reasons for, for doing that. Um, but what I also want to do is take these, uh, take these, uh, yeah, let me get that out of the way. Take these, uh, scientific elements here and actually, um, let you be able to pull those and, uh, and actually require you to have them on board. If you say, want to get the temperature of your craft, uh, or the, uh, you know, the G force or what have you. Yeah. So, um, so those are, those are kind of, so, kind of some of the key things that I want to have there in 1.0. Um, I'd really like it if people had the ability to uh, automatically take off and land on the moon and just do that all in one completely automated shot. If they're able, if they're up to the task of programming that script, um, as always, you know, it, this mod is all about doing it yourself, finding your own solutions to problems. Uh, I want to 
I definitely want to preserve that, but I want to make sure that, that, you know, people at least have the capability to, um, get somewhere meaningful in the game while using KOS. So, um, so, uh, you know, when I started KOS, um, there were actually a couple of mods I had in my, in my mind at the time. Um, basically one of the criteria I wanted when I was deciding which one to do was, uh, you know, I wanted to make a mod that Scott Manley would want to review. Um, and so one, one of the ideas I had was uh, a cash mod, um, basically like a career mod. Um, and that would, and my idea for this was basically that you would have private funding and you would have public funding and you would kind of get, you would get public funding when you did something, you know, something splashy, something that, you know, something that's, um, history making, like say landing, landing a Kerbal on the moon and, um, the criteria for how much money you got from that would be dependent on um, what you did and whether it was manned or not and how many uh, astronauts you sent and whether or not you got them home safely and, and, and all that. Right. Um, and then uh, so, so those kinds of tasks would be a one time um, cash infusion. And then the, uh, the other type of income that you would get would be the private income where you'd be able to launch things like GPS satellites. So if you put the right hardware on a satellite, you would be able to, um, you would be able to have that be a GPS satellite and get money from private corporations for, um, or, or like a communication satellite, for example, maybe that's, maybe that makes more sense, uh, that you would be, um, that your, you would have private comp corporations that would be able to uh, make use of your communication satellites and they would pay you an ongoing cost for that. Um, and the reason I think that you would need those two kinds of income is because some of the missions in, in KSP would probably get really long. Like um, if you're sending something to Duna, it might be hundreds of days, right, of game time. And how are you getting paid during those hundreds of days of game time, right? Um, I can... I kind of stopped because I saw that, um, like I actually started to move towards that. I actually started to build that. Uh, and then I saw that, um, that, uh, squad was, uh, now doubling down their efforts to work on that, uh, career, you know, portion of the game. And, um, I saw that another mod had come out that was another career mod that Scott Manley reviewed. So <laughs> he reviewed it. So it, it was a good idea. But, um, of course, um, my number one rule is that by the time you've thought of a good idea, someone else has already thought of that idea. Um, it's just a question of who gets, you know, who's, who's the first to finish the implementation. So, but anyway, um, once I saw that there were these other efforts going on, I kind of abandoned that one. Um, I, I definitely wanted to do something unique, something that hadn't been seen before. And this was my other idea. So, um, yeah. And you know, after this mod, um, I, I still have ideas like, um, but one, one thing I kind of want to do, and I'm not sure if I'll ever actually do this, but I want to kind of create a pocket space center mod. Um, and what that would be, would be, um, currently it's kind of a pain to go back to the space center and select an, another craft. You know, um, if you select the wrong craft, it's like, no, because you know, it's going to be, you know, another 30 seconds before you can actually switch back to the vessel you did want. Um, things like that, um, you know, even just going to the VAB, uh, you know, it, all the loading times, it's just, I, I, I don't like the fact that you have to reload a whole scene just to get to what is basically the game's menu, which is the space center. So I thought, okay, well, why not put a, you know, a button up here somewhere or where I could just click there and, um, you know, I would get, you know, um, more traditional menus like, um, I would be able to see a list of my craft and be able to just click on one and just go directly to that craft without having to go back to the space center. Um, or if there's one button that just takes me directly to the VAB or the SPH, um, you know, and, and just, you know, a quick, um, just a, you know, just a quick speed, <laughs> you know, um, helper, you know, to, to avoid all that loading. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, 
that might be the next thing I do. I don't know. Um, we'll see how it goes. I also have some ideas for um, some on, you know, some uh, mobile games that I would like to work on. Just not mods, just straight uh, new games that I would like to work on. But uh, we'll see how that goes. So uh, on the forums now, um, let's see what do we have here. Nor Claremont writes, before the comms of KOS get changed any, perhaps it should be considered that 0.22 is going to introduce vanilla comms with its own limitations and parameters. If KOS could somehow use that methodology to transmit programs like scientific data, then more attention could be focused on the language itself than the comms. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if, if Squad makes their own... Um, you know, comm system, you know, their own way of using these antennas and comm dishes, then yeah, I am totally going to play ball. Um, the system I came up with was, it was just, it, it's intentionally simple, right? It's, um, you know, it's just each antenna you add just adds a flat amount to your range, which is completely unrealistic. Um, each comm dish you add, you add, um, multiplies your range by 10 or by 100 which doesn't even make sense um so um and, and you know and the only reason that i even did that was because um i saw that a lot of people were exclusively using their archive drive and it's not really the intent at all to um to have this time and space transcending volume that you can just, you can access anywhere at any time. And, you know, if you go backwards in time by say reloading a quick save, that'll still make sense. You know, I don't know what's going on. I keep seeing lights moving past my crap. I'm not sure what's going on there. I think it might have to do with the aviation mod that I have installed, but uh, the aviation lights mod. Um, anyways, back to the archive drive. Um, I saw that a lot of people were, were doing that and, really the intent is that you you build a program and you ship it with your ship right you you package it with your ship and then it works or it fails you know just like just like any launch you do in ksp you know you don't get to rebuild your ship after you launch it um in my case you do get to rewrite your program but there's there's an intentional obstacle there that you can't just you can't just um reload and then you know transmit the program uh, i don't know uh, you know it's there's this mod definitely does have intentional obstacles because i personally believe that the whole point of a game is uh overcoming obstacles i mean just voluntarily over overcoming obstacles that you don't have to overcome that's basically the the definition of a game right there so um okay so um biz courier um posted uh, put a post on the forums where he basically listed all of his um wishes and desires for the mod so you know i think I'm gonna, it looks like a good list so i'm gonna go through it line by line and and uh respond to each one so the first one is less bu less bugs i can't argue with that absolutely yes less bugs would be great um you know it's just the nature of software um especially since this this isn't even a 1.0 yet you know there's going to be bugs and you know i i deal with them as as best i can and as best as i have time for so uh let's see here functions maybe they are not very 80s though how about a go to instead um i think this post may have been made before my last update because um the the new parameters you can assign to uh when you're doing the run statement um that's pretty much like a function there and you can call a program from another program. So you kind of have functions already. Um, I may put something in where you can have a more traditional function where you've actually def defined the function somewhere else in the same file. Um, and you can already, uh, as part of the whole um, mod interoperability thing, you can always, you can already do external calls using the call command. I realize that a lot of this stuff is completely undocumented and that's just because I don't have time for that. I mean, you know, I, I'm glad that uh, things have started up like the wiki um, where the community is actually able to keep track of a lot of this themselves and help each other out with this stuff. Actually, you know what? 
it's one of the it's one of the funnest parts of this project is watching other people help each other out with the system I built. Like, I you know I can't express enough. You know what a what a huge thing it's been for me for this whole community to pop up around this mod for this game. Like, um, watching something you've built just take off like that. It's huge. Okay. File names should also eat up memory space. Wow. Uh, I don't, you, you're right. I mean, file names should take up memory space technically, but, um, I don't know if I want to be that much of a jerk. Like I, you know, I don't know if I want, <laughs> I don't know if I want people to be worrying about, Oh, I have to name everything one character now. So that I'm not eating up space. You know, they, you know, some people might just be like, you know, I want to save every little character. I don't know. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll do that one, but I appreciate the, uh, you know, the attempt to be um, technically accurate and, you know, okay. Limited transmission speed, depending on the max comm range. Um, delays is something, you know, transmission delays is something that I had considered, but again, I, I don't want to be that much of a jerk. Like um, the, uh, the amount of space, between two planets is at least in our solar system is a few light minutes apart, right? So if you're saying that you're going to type a key or you're going to try to send a file and it's going to take a whole minute or a few minutes, um, I don't know that I really want to do that. Um, plus, you know, there's a lot of extra complication in that just for me, just to implement that. And if I'm implementing a feature that's, that's good, just going to frustrate people, then I'm not so sure that that's what I want to do. I mean, obstacles are good, but then the really hard, you know, the really, the really bad obstacles that are just getting in your way for no reason and you can't get rid of them. And I feel like my, I feel like my car is slowing down here. I don't know why. So uh, maybe I'm, Am I going uphill? Yeah, I mean, hang on here. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm not really paying attention to what the to, to what the vehicle's doing right now, so um yeah, no. Um yeah, I, I don't think that I'm going to do um um delays or tr worry about transmission speed. Um I, you know, there's a certain amount of realism that a game should have. And then there's the point where you've gone too far. And I, I would put that in the kind of the too far category myself, but okay. Exponential falling efficiency of the new antennas. Uh, so yeah, I did talk about how simplistic the range calculations are. I kind of want to keep them simple. Again, if, if squad does something with their, um, with their comm transmissions, I will follow suit. But um, barring that, I, I think I'm probably just going to keep it as is. Uh, let's see here. Calm range of the base module should be the diameter of KSC. I think what he's saying here is that the calm range should be based on your distance to the Kerbal Space Center um, and not based on your altitude. And that was my original intent. But then, you know, I realized that if somebody hasn't put enough antennas on their ship, then the, then being on the opposite side of the planet, like, uh, like, uh, here's a space center. If my craft is over here, then my range, like the distance there is going to be significantly different than if it's on this side. Um, and Again, I, th I think that's just kind of a level of complexity that I don't want to give people. My justification for that is just basically that, you know, they have they have listening stations around the planet. So all you have to do is be in range of the planet and you're good. So uh, let's see here. Vessel to vessel communication. Yes. Yes. I want to have vessel to vessel communication for sure. I, I kind of want to have command where you can go send to target or something along those lines or copy from target or copy to target. Um, so that, you know, so that you can share your programs between vessels. Uh, if say you've got, uh, you know, a vessel that's around Duna and it's out of range and you didn't put enough antennas on it. 
and you decide you want to send a special mission there to to send the new software to the vessel yeah you should be able to do that sure you can already kind of do that in the sense that if you dock two vessels together um, the the KOS units on each vessel will see the volume that's on the other so uh, doing that you can actually see see both volumes at once and then you can use a copy from or copy to to um, copy them across and I don't know if I'm going to make it up this hill right now huh you know what hmm Maybe I'll just continue on and we'll see how that goes. If if I start to slide, I might have to intervene here. Um, I chose um, I chose the, the the path I'm choosing here is kind of cutting up the middle, and I've heard that this is a bad path to go, but I'm I'm just not sure that there's a better way. Um, I kind of I, the other option I had thought of was going up this way. Um, but I feel like I feel like it's going to be worse that way. Like it's going to be either longer just trying to get around these mountains or hmm. Well, you know what? I don't even have to decide yet because I'm not even going to be here by the end of this episode. So um, yeah, if you have a, if you have an opinion about what route I should take. Yeah, absolutely. Please do comment on this video. Uh, let's see, what's next? Uh, I hate to... Okay. Left and right arrow keys in the command line. I, <laughs> I beeping hate to write a line complete anew if I realize that I have a typo at the beginning. Uh, this is something I've thought about, and it's something, you know, that I've... At some points, I've wished that the... that the Windows command prompt had... Um, it, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if I've even seen a system that actually has the ability to put your cursor somewhere else and, uh, you know, put your cursor back on the line and select and, you know, um, one thing I would like to do though, is have the mouse clicks matter. Like, uh, if you're in the editor, I'd like you to be able to position your cursor based on clicking with the mouse. And, you know, I, this happened during the interview, um, with, with uh squad um he, um he kept trying to um pd kept trying to click where he wanted the cursor to go and of course i haven't implemented that at all uh even if it's not <clears throat> excuse me if, even if it's not really realistic for an old style computer like this to even have a mouse um i kind of still want that because you know that's just kind of that's just a pain point for no reason that's not an obstacle to overcome that's just a pain point for no reason um with respect to the command line feature he's asking for here, I don't know if I should do that or not. Um, it's something I'll think about for sure. Um, it, it would be tough because the way I've implemented it right now, it, you know, it just, it treats that, that one line as a string and, um, and uh, it's, you know, it's just not, it's just not handled the same way that the editor is. So um, that would be tough. So, uh, let's see here. A function like the log one that someone had submitted for some reasons hasn't been implemented yet, which allows you to write any data to disk. I am still looking for a good flight recorder just for static statistic reasons. Um, <clears throat> actually, um, this ha actually has been implemented. You can actually, um, you can actually log, um, log any string or, or the output of any variable to so you go log whatever to and then the file name um the one that the uh, that the other guy had implemented um um i can't remember why exactly but i you know it, there was just something about it that that wasn't right well one thing was the syntax wasn't right um it didn't match the rest of kos because um he had just had log file name and then value Whereas I had switched it so that uh, because as you've probably noticed, all of KOS is intended to be as English like as possible. Uh, I had switched it to uh, log value to file. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Reason why I didn't, uh, why, I, why I ended up rewriting that, uh, 
that code was simply because um, he had, instead of using the abstractions that I already have to write files, he had just written, he just issued the commands to write directly to the disk. Um, and then he had kind of prefaced that by saying, you know, this only works on the archive drive right now. Um, so he was just writing directly to the disk, um, to the archive folder. Um, and the problem was that with that is that it, it didn't really allow us to um, log files to any other drive. And it, it was kind of needless in my, in my opinion. So uh, yeah, so I just, I, I kind of rewrote that. I implemented it. Um, it's in there now. And, uh, and yeah, so check that one off. Um, okay. And uh, by the way, let me just say um, thank you to everybody who contributes to this. It's really appreciated. And in a lot of cases, these people have hit on a lot of bugs that I didn't even know were there in some cases. Um, they've, they've, you know, implemented things that I've wanted to implement, but, uh, would never have the time to, uh, so that's great. Um, and, uh, and if anyone wants to help me out with the maneuver th node thing or the, you know, finding encounters with other planets thing or, or that, you know, things that I'm really struggling with the math on, that would be fantastic. So. For the reasons li uh, like above, a possibility to read any value from any part. Again, um, I've I've had trouble, you know, trying to address individual parts. It will be in there. Um, the last time I looked at it, I did find a way to get an ID number to a part. Um, r right now, like one that would persist, um, but I'm trying to figure out a way to boil that down to a number that the user can actually use because it's something like a ten-digit number, and I can't. You know, I can't expect the user to type that in every time. And also, you know, kind of if you what if the user wants to launch two craft um, that are identical and use the same program between each craft? Well, each craft is going to even though, even if the parts keep the same unique ID number, um, each craft is going to have different numbers on the same part. So there needs to be some kind of a selector system, kind of like some kind of jQuery like selector where I can choose the X wheel right on my craft and then address that. Um, but then there are additional problems like what if what if I dock two vessels together? Well, <clears throat> and then I try to run that program, the the order in which my parts are now may have changed. So there's just these little, you know, kind of problems that are standing in the way of something that I've wanted to do for a long time. One of the one of the things that actually um, that actually inspired me to do this mod was the idea of um, having, you know, like I was trying to build a VTOL or um, like a just a craft that that maintains its altitude by hovering. Um, and one of the problems I ran into was the um, uh, the center of gravity would be off. So the thing would tend to flip over in one direction or the other. And I thought, well, what if I could, you know, modify the throttle of each engine dynamically based on, you know, the momentum of the craft and, you know, and keep it upright that way and steer it that way. And, and um, you know, because the craft I was, the craft I was building was, it had the fuel tanks um like a, it would drain one of the fuel tanks first right the, the the fuel tank that it would drain first would throw off the center of balance as time went on so it didn't matter really how perfectly you um how perfectly you balanced it at first it would it would just over time it would just you would just lose control of, of it so my idea so that was my idea is to you know try to create some kind of scripting system that would take a value and take an action based on that value. Um, and uh, so obviously one part of modifying individual engine throttles would be addressing individual parts. So clearly this is something that I wanna do, but again, it's just something that I just haven't been able to wrap my head around yet. So, okay, more key bindings. Not that KSP has left us with many choices, but the num keys instead, like on num, key, like on num six, for six on the num keypad would which would allow you to have up to 15 keys which don't collide with anything in KSB. So what this one is basically asking for is um, 
the ability to bind to things other than action groups. Um, that's definitely something I want again. Um, and yeah, you know what? Um, why not have bindings directly to some of the keys? Um, I kind of wanted to keep it within the control structure that Kerbal Space Program already has, but I think that that it might be necessary to go beyond that anyway. Um, but one thing I, I did want to do is kind of create some function buttons down here because I've got all of this space on the on the KOS terminal and it's not being used for anything and I kind of feel like I need to have it here in order to have this close button here. Uh, the um, the KOS terminal, um, it used to be when I was, you know, back in version 0 0.1 that nobody ever saw, uh, the, the terminal was like this big because I was trying to come up with, you know, a bezel that's, that's consistent with um, with monitors from the era that I imagine this computer is from. I, I kind of see KSB as occurring, you know, in the, in the seventies or eighties, um, you know, in, during that equivalent time of development for the, for the Kerbal race. Right. Um, so, but, uh, I had all sorts of switches and controls down here and I got rid of all of that just because it was taking up so much space on the screen. Um, but um, I would like to, but I definitely still have this and I definitely would like to have buttons that you can map down here, uh, maybe even some LED lights that you can control with your scripts. Um, some people have asked for sound effects, but I've heard that that's hard to accomplish for a mod in KSB. So um, we can see how that goes. But um, yeah, so, uh, you know, and, it, and of course, yeah, you know, having you know, individual key bindings that are outside of the normal KSP structure so that we have more, you know, there goes those lights again. What is that? Um, yeah, so um, that's definitely something I will visit. Okay, let's see here. Firing, toggling, turning on and off any function of a part without having it in action groups. Action groups are way too limited. Symmetry, you can't fire one at of a set you place in symmetry and there are only 10 of them on complex mission designs they are colliding or exceeding or exceeded way too fast i believe that is all kind of part of the same thing of trying to address individual parts um so yeah i mean uh, that's 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 just all part and part part and parcel of what i've said so far um is uh, you know users need a way to address these parts individually they need a way to control them individually um, i always wanted to kind of have the ability to say okay well on this engine activate it and actually do that from code and and have it have nothing to do with an action group and that would have been awesome it just didn't work out um and uh yeah so we're almost near the uh near waypoint two here so let's see how we're doing on the map Yeah, so we can see that we've actually made a, an appreciable amount of distance here. Um, again, uh, I don't know where I'm going to go after this. Um, if you think, if you have an opinion about which direction you think I should go in, um, let me know. Um, I've heard that people, again, I've, I, I've heard that people have had trouble going up the middle. So, and that is kind of the way I'm intending to go. But um, my intended course is is up the middle and then into here and then around the bend here and up this coast here. I, I figure by the time I get here, like I figure that the coasts have got to be pretty navigable. Um, so once I get to that point, I think I should be okay. But um, if you think I should go this way, then yeah. Yeah, let me know. So. So that's about it for this episode. Uh, I see I've got 900 meters to go. Um, I'm going to try to keep these videos up. I can't believe that I just spent the, the last half hour just talking. Uh, I'm not a very talkative person. I, you know, I'm, I'm an introvert. This isn't very natural for me. But, um, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I, I watch Far Lens or Bust. Um, by Kurt J. Mack. Um, and that was one of the things he talked about was how doing web series like this, like, like Far Lines or Bus, uh, helped, help him, helped him come out of his shell a little bit. 
and uh you know he talked about how he had to get used to editing the sound of his own voice and, and you know i think the other videos i've been doing have been kind of helping me in that way so it's something i'd like to keep up with i don't know how, if i really have time to keep up with the series but i will try to keep it keep up with one episode a week and if you send me lots of comments uh, on the forums and on youtube then i'll have lots of things to talk about and it'll be much easier for me to continue and as we tick down the distance the brakes engage and here we are at waypoint two um if you'd like to know what my end position here is there it is so until next time hack responsibly <laughs>